Welcome, 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 one and all the, to the Glentendo Circuit, Team Do Circuit, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Online Weekly. You got the tournament code up in the top right because you yourself watching this uh, tournament VOD, you may join this tournament yourself if you like and pick either the red or the blue team to help support either team in just this silly little tournament that we got going on here on Tuesday nights. No, uh, no theme this week either because I would like to officially inform the people that Glentendo probably has has stopped giving a shit about creating a uh, about creating yes. a um what do you what do you call it a um a theme I'm creating these little themes yes thank you I don't know why I couldn't think of the word theme when it was the only subject matter of the sentence I was talking about but uh I yes I've been lied to by many people you know some of my exes you know relatives every now and again the world the media but Everything. you know what it inspires me to not lie to you. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you and <laughs> saying we haven't had a theme for the Team Doe Circuit in weeks. Glenn doesn't care. He is a prime. He, he just wants to play with... He's so selfish, man. He just wants to play Mario Kart with people. What a son of a bitch. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree He's with that. He's just I mean, like, oh, bro. Just, first of all, you can tell that by looking at his face. That, like The first thing that came up <laughs> when I opened the MHG Discord was that stupid picture of him in the, the Link not safe for it's The like, not safe for work section? Yeah, don't ask yeah, why I was looking there. Don't look at that unless but, you're uh, unless you're ready for it. A, a warning to I, all of you. I was never ready for that, but we're here. Uh, Team Go Circuit. We say it every single week. It's a little bit of like not not a formality at this point, but it it's really it's not taken near. It, all right, yeah. Well, yeah. Th so here's the thing. It's a formality. Shit, I lied to them. It, it's okay. I, I told it's them I wasn't going to do that. You know what? We're trying though. It's all it's all we could ever do. So, the main thing is like it's a bit of a formality, but in the sense where. You want more people discovering it and learning or knowing that it exists and let alone that they could like, you know, join into it because there might, you know, these don't get like, you know, this is knocking the world over, man. I'm not doing like crazy big YouTuber amounts of people watching these things, but you might get a couple new people here and there that just check in one week randomly and they're like, oh, wow, this is a thing. And then guess what? They hear you say that, hey, you could enter at any time. These are open. Red versus blue. The guy who organizes this, that, the other thing. Like, it makes sense. Um, you never know who's watching or who's doing what. So with that in mind, we got kind of a comfy stream today because we have two blue team streamers. Uh, which does happen sometimes. Some some weeks pop off, some weeks don't. Uh, sometimes the, the streams are evenly distributed to where we could watch like two uh, at once and have them be on opposite teams. And other times it's kind of what we got today. But either way, uh, it'll still be a good time uh, because Kugi pretty much has been holding it down for us. I literally can only... I can't even think of the one time he missed, but I'm pretty sure he must have missed at least once. And Kunio, basically, since he started, same deal. Uh, he just started a little later than Kugi. So at the very least, uh, you know, you get to see some good gameplay out of, out of some players that are pretty competitive in these things overall. Yeah, it's like the nerd that just gets pounded on in, like, middle school or whatever. Yeah, he's got perfect attendance. Probably gets his ass beat oh, for no. it growing up because little kids are immature. But guess what? He got perfect attendance. He got really well educated. He was blessed to be able to do that. And now he's making stacks as an adult while, you know, still at the Denny's. You know, and when you're not waitressing in the Denny's, you're probably selling drugs behind it. So really, who won? <laughs> who, who, who won in that exchange? Well, I think it's Coogie Coogs. To right, say right, the right, yeah, you know, I'm just going to agree. I'm going to agree. I had a counterpoints, but not really, not <laughs> valid ones, just devil's advocate <laughs> ones. Not important. Not important. Uh, what is important is Coogie looks like he's getting these mini drifts in. It looks like he's playing like an actual, like, you see what he's doing? Yes. Uh, he's starting to drift like in the middle of straightaways and getting the little mini boosts, which is a really big component of this game that you see at really high level play, not even just high level play. Because um, debatably, you could say that Kugi's been high level play since he started these, and then now he's starting to break that echelon of really high level because he's kind of tryharding every week. So, you know, it's bound to happen, basically. Mm. And speaking of tryharding yes, every week. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, speaking of tryharding every week, there goes EO. Uh, who's been consistently just like in the results um, every week? Uh, he hasn't really made those those big like massive top eight results, but you're seeing him win races here and there. Because I'm pretty sure he. Oh wait, no, he's in second right now. I don't know who the dry Bowser is, but in either case, he's always towards the one twos and threes. So uh, that's always good to see. I like to call that stuff out because it's like kind of the whole point of the weekly stream. Follow the trends. Mm -hmm. See who's doing what. Uh, Kugi shaking his effing head, and there we go. Drayden Eo. Taking one and two, and that's really weird. I thought I saw a dry Bowser icon, but maybe I was just stroking out. Turns out it was DK. 
<laughs> I was at, I didn't want to ask you about it. I don't know, dude. Because like I thought like it was just in the mix. I don't like, I don't, I don't even want to know. Behind everything, no. I didn't see one. No, that's not it at all. But I oh okay, I think Knight's in there too. I'm pretty sure Knight's the one with the face mask. Ooh, pretty oh, sure. Uh, uh, that was just, oh. I, oh, wow. We've been doing these so often and so much that I've literally identified people's me's. Dude, same. It's pretty good. Like, I, I don't hate it. No, it works. It honestly works. It helps us. I mean, it helps us, like, note the regulars, you know? I mean, one thing I do as a uh, Smash commentator is that sometimes, I mean, when I look at a bracket, uh, if I see somebody's main, right, at, like, a certain high enough, like, echelon of a bracket, I can tell who it is. So, like, sometimes I'll see, like, but even before, like, I'll come into a tournament and be like, oh, I wasn't paying attention to the tournament, but we want you for top eight, and then I'll sit down for top eight, and I'll see that there's a wolf really higher up, and before I see the name, like, depending on where I am or who I see around me, I'll be like, oh, that's probably Lemon Tea, you know, and half the time I'm right, because, like, he's, you know, one of, if not the best wolf players in the state, so it uh, makes sense to be him, you know, you see, or, like, uh, whatever. I'll see, like, another wolf, or, you see uh, no, I'll see another wolf, and I'll you, think it's Jack. You Jackal, see what Koogie's you know, doing, by the way? I'll be right. What's up? You see what Kugi's doing, by the way? He's he's yeah, he's he's a he's a broke bitch, so he's getting that money, and so then he's gonna go get an item. He's doing the thing that wow, interesting. I'm really curious to see how he ends up in this race. This is cool. I, I could I could get on board with this sort of like tech heavy Kugi stuff. I'm 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 he's definitely stupid. about it because this is something yeah, we saw Royal do. Uh, that one time he like entered in streams and he just like kind of walloped everybody. He was doing all this crazy stuff, yeah, where he would purposely go down. And then, like, you'd see him get the coins, much like how we just watched Kugi do. He'd get the item boxes, and then all of a sudden he'd go from, like, 12 to 1, uh, you know. And, and here's Kugi already catching up to the end of the pack, despite starting so late. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it turns out for him. Yeah. Because uh, on the other end of things, it. look at Kunio in first place, just racing how you should race in Mario Kart, right? It's yeah. like what you should be doing. But we'll see how it pans out. Because it's already lap two, and Kugi's still in 12th place. <laughs> All I can think of is Dr. Evil saying with like the little sarcastic, you know, hand gestures when you said that. <laughs> when you said that just now, the way you should be. Well, yeah, exactly. Like should he be should be it, trying know? to win immediately. I am seeing Look a lot where of he's going to use this bullet bill in exactly. fifth place, man. What a genius. Look at that. Yeah, so it makes sense. So you get that late boost at the end. And look at that. Even even got a little casualty on, on his hands. That bullet bill and yeah and then look at him he's already in fourth place he avoided a lot of the, the cluster that happens a lot of times when you're leading the pack or even towards the high end of the pack and now he's just chasing down the winner um probably won't catch those item st uh staggers that he lost to last last sunday actually if you recall the free for all oh, circuit how could you forget lost in heartbreaking fashion um but I, i'm leaving kunio on though because he's standing strong and here goes yo um Possibly gonna go down to Kugi's shenanigans? No, just barely. And I feel like this is like him evaluating what's going on. He looked a little disappointed, but also just yeah. like, oh, bro, I came from the back. But yeah, no, I, I got that same vibe, man. I got that same vibe that he's just experimenting right now. Where else would he do it besides exactly. Team Bill? It's actually kind of the perfect place for him to really try exactly. it out. Exactly. You know, yeah, it's a tournament you... that you know people, the players don't, they don't take it as seriously. You know, I mean, the team for the team format, at least with the way uh, it can be currently, it is currently ran. Is a little bit flubbed and we learned from night last week that a big part of the reason that that is is because you know the teams aren't necessarily preset any player can just join and then just randomly pick red or blue and god knows you know when you're looking at you know the actual uh team selection area which one actually needs more players and which one doesn't and it just leads to them becoming very uh unbalanced as they say so uh um, yeah it's just it's like it, it, this is really more of a casual format i mean i remember like on youtube I think a lot of people, I think there was like rumors of Mario Kart 9 and they're literally just rumors. I think somebody got bored on YouTube and then just started doing that. And as a result, you know, every Nintendo YouTuber is subsequently talking about it. And if by some grace of God, something like that were to happen and they would drop Mario Kart 9 on the Switch, I don't think it would be like Smash in the sense that we like, you know, stop playing whatever the latest game is and move on to the next one because it's on a different console. If they were two and they were both on the Switch, I would honestly personally vote to replace the Team Bill circuit with the other game and then still run oh, Mario yeah. Kart 8 on Sundays. That is what I think the best course of action would be. But obviously, Mario Kart 9, I don't think it exists. It's just rumored right now. There are like a million Nintendo rumors with like nothing confirmed. I mean, I feel like Nintendo fans just pretty much exist for it. But anyway, right now, Kunio, another recipient, another member of the blue team, hanging back in seventh right now. Yeah, he's like, you could tell 
You can really tell the disparity, not, nece so, not necessarily the disparity, but the willfulness of experimentation and, you know, which one of these players truly takes the game a little more seriously. Because right now you saw, well, you saw oh, Kunio just hanging. He, well, he was back, but he wasn't hanging back to get items. Right well, now the, he's just racing. The thing he is, was hanging in six for a long is, time. I don't, I don't know if you saw before uh, this race started, Kunio is actually in a 1v1 against uh, Knight, who is on his team. And you can see in chat... Uh, Knight said basically the, the room random shuffled, uh, basically just those two out of it. So I don't know, man. That's just Nintendo Online stuff. It sucks. Uh, meanwhile, I think Kuki found himself what looks to be a significantly bigger room right here. So this is the weird Ooh. stuff that happens, man, <coughs> where it's just like uh, it's two people versus now ten bots. So this is actually kind of similar to what we saw on Sunday, where it was a lot, a lot of Kuki versus. Uh, who was he racing against head to head? I, uh, Vertex. Vertex, or was it Jinja? I don't know. Either way, there was. Uh, yeah. Oh, they, they no, were I think it was. Jin, yeah. So I think it actually was Jinja. I think yeah. it was Jinja because we had the most streaming. I think they were constantly in the same race, and it was basically the one v one. And then you get another maybe one or two guys like Civ Nine or uh, would would just kind of be in there. And it's like kind of good and bad because you, you limit each other like that, you know? Like, cause one of you is probably gonna get first and second. Unless someone really gets hosed over by like CPU items, mm -hmm. so it's like you're forever just gonna keep that balance of who's winning the one v ones, provided you're both finishing in the top two, while everyone else is sort of fending in their full lobby of twelve or whatever. Yeah, and there's also the toss up of uh, there's also the toss up of lightning, as we learned from Knight uh back on Sunday for the uh for the Glentendo No Friendo circuit, mm -hmm. uh. What we learned from him is that, uh, you know, I mean, I asked him a question about Lightning because a lot of, like, you know, the players in the Nintendo circuit hate it. And even he said, you know, it's definitely not the worst item in the game because you can predict as a uh, Kunio takes that first there over, uh, over, uh, overnight, yeah, actually. Overnight. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. There you go. Was that, uh, uh Knight's second game? From looks yeah, like it looks like it. Yeah, and, uh, uh, here's Kugi doing yes. the stuff. Do, does the item strat again. But, uh, as we were talking about here, you know, what you were saying in terms of it was just pretty much the 1v1 between him and Knight, right? Mm -hmm. It, uh, it's interesting because in the Glintendo circuit, I asked him about, you know, Lightning, and he said Lightning isn't even that unbalanced of an item because when the CPUs, who are the ones in the back who normally get it, you can pretty much predict when they're going to do it eventually and when, by, when therefore, you should be prepared for it. It's just it just essentially became you know part of the free for all Mario Kart 8 Deluxe meta, but in the Team Do circuit, when you're stuck in a one v one with the same with a guy who's on your team, that actually creates a little bit of another disparity. You have less of a chance to be hit by the lightning because since every other player in the lobby is a CPU, that means half of them are red team, half of them are blue. And if of the blue team was the were the ones who happened to have gotten you know the lightning. It's not going to hit them. Do you look at that? So that... now it might not even matter as much. So then it just becomes a true testament of racing skill between Kunio and Knight, which ironically so... they're on the same team. But again, not sure how much they care about it. Well, that's the thing is they don't. So like if you just exactly. saw this lobby, uh, it was it's basically I think I saw there was four people in this lobby, all four of which are on blue. So now it's basically a same Mario, a normal Mario Kart race where, like you already said, you're basically just trying to outclass your fellow teammate without the use of like your traditional homing stuff like like the red shell and the blue shell are going to behave differently and and knight even said it in chat he's like it basically the lobby sort of decides basically all, all of the stuff that happens like who wins and uh who has the advantage essentially so mm -hmm. it's i don't know we talk about it every week and it's part of because it's one of the few things to talk about during a team circuit is how flawed it is if, if we're running said flawed circuit but um, with that in mind, uh, I do think today might be a smaller turnout day. I'm going to actually check in on that now that we're about 20 minutes in because that might also explain a little bit. I don't think I've really seen much red team outside of like EO and maybe someone else. Yeah, um, Drayden, Blaze, EO, those are the three who represent on the right in what was basically a 3v3 in Kugi Kug's race, actually, one he finished in fifth place in because he is very much experimenting with the holdback item strategy. It's, uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's able to, uh, he's practicing it right now, and he's able to really just amp up a bunch of places, but not all the way up to first like he probably, like he probably would want. But yeah. uh, either way, I think I it's I think it's I agree with you. I think it's pretty clear that he's just he's using the team bill circuit to practice right now this strategy because I think it's frankly the perfect place for him to do that because uh, you actually can't. Another bad thing about you know Mario Kart Wi-Fi or Nintendo Wi-Fi if you hop online right if you play with random people not in a tournament whether it's worldwide, regional or whatever, 
if you do either of those things, I believe you can't set the rules, and it is always a hundred CC. Oh. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, because I remember when I was that? playing in these circuits a lot more. <laughs> I wouldn't join different tournaments to practice. I would just hop in and be like, worldwide, let's play with anybody in the world. And then I noticed it was going way slower. And I'm like, uh, oh. And there were, there were no options to do rules or anything because all you do when it goes to worldwide or regional, it just put, it just throws you in a lobby well, with random people over and over. And then people leave, people come back. It's not like a tournament format. The way, so, the way it's, uh, yeah. so I don't mean to cut you off. I just, this will probably provide no, I was done. A, little bit of, a little bit of explanation is, Today, right now, we're only sitting at 10 entrants, kind of a slower day. Probably the team format, I'm not going to lie. And and the thing is, is um, within that, seven people on blue team, three people on red team. So blue team basically wins by sheer numbers. Like, the human people are, they're going to win the lobby, as, as you were kind of explaining before. Like, because it's just, the, 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 the AI isn't there. It's only supposed to com uh, compensate for, like, some of the smaller numbers. But in this particular case... Like 10 entrants, yeah, I don't know. I would actually love to see another mode, like maybe battle mode or something. Uh, you read um, my mind. It was, I was dude, just battle mode that. would be so cool. I think getting the organization behind it, and I'll be honest with you, maybe I should just look at more into. Oh, <laughs> this looks so funny. <laughs> yeah, you never see <laughs> Big that. Big gorilla anymore. does uh, does reverse. But anyways, <laughs> so I was just coming home from work on the turnpike. Yeah, he's like, ah, oh, jeez, miss these coins. I gotta go back. I mean, he's wearing a tie, so clearly he's coming yeah, back he's from work too. Probably just hit a, probably just hit a nail on the turnpike or something like that. It's gotta wait for AAA. Yeah, like D obnoxious. DK has always been all business. But anyways, so all business but party because no pants. I do think that maybe it might be worthwhile, maybe even on my part, putting together more like uh, I don't know. I gotta look at how to do this. I don't really want to be bothered with the bracket either, if I'm being honest. But I am here every week, so it would make sense. Maybe no, that I'll, could work. Maybe I'll Throw just look into like a Smash GG, and then we could just do some sort of bracket with team mode. I'm just because like I don't know. It is the formula is stale. The, the, no, the free it really is. The free circuit has not aged well, while the Glintendo. No, circuit Glintendo has circuit's really great. Just, only grown. Love the Glintendo circuit. Team Doe circuit, is not great. Uh, I don't. I don't not love it. Like it's nice to have a day of streaming. It's nice to get some people together. Uh, it's nice to you know, whatever. All, all the nice things about hosting community stuff. But I don't know, dude. I'm trying to see something a little more competitive or something a little bit more yeah. sweaty. Like I'm trying to see people get really tight about like battle mode. Oh, here comes <laughs> here comes uh, the, the 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 eight. Let's I see. can't believe Natuna's farm battle mode. Oh shoot! Good. That actually worked out. He, he just <laughs> Kugi smiling. He just passed. Uh, I think that was cold. Uh, King cold. Is, is that it? Wait. Yeah, that is. Well, it's King, King Az cold. He, he was here a couple weeks ago. Actually, I think did he win last week? But, question mark. I feel like he may have. I, I feel like I sort of remember that. I have to go back I and check the results. wasn't here. Oh, that's right. Dude. That's right. Because I had my seminar that crapped I out forgot. because my router yeah, literally broke yeah, yeah, in the middle yeah, of that, yeah, yeah. which is just as well. Because if I'd been here, then, you know, it would have crapped out in the middle of the circuit. So then I would have been gone in that. Be like, uh, David? David? <laughs> yeah, so, All right, David died. Yeah, Let's go. Toad's Turnpike, for a while. Bad, bad, bad stage, I agree. Yeah, yeah it, it sucks. It just stage. It's like... There were so many other tracks throughout the history of, like, Mario Kart that has, like, you know, that city, you know, like, that city highway environment. You know, there's Moonview Highway in Mario Kart Wii. There's uh, Mushroom, there's Shroom City and, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Double Dash and Mushroom Bridge, also Double Dash. Then the Shroom Bridge and, uh, what, you, what do you call it, uh, Mario Kart DS. So many which have made, like, utilization of the cars. And while the cars are a little more annoying, damn, there's just something about Toad's Turnpike that makes them even more so. And I think the reason is because it's a lot... Let me actually, you know, I just remembered what it was in uh, in those games. As Cuneo looks like he is going to take this yeah, race, but we're this. not he's quite sure yet. Let's just end this out before I finish my thought here. As Cuneo does it, why drift? Yeah, no one in sight having him eat the dust or eat the snow, I should say. But yeah, I think the thing with Toad's Turnpike is that the other, all the other ones that have like cars in the way, right? That this cars as the stage hazards, mm -hmm. most of them are like two lane streets. They're like two lane highways where it rewards the driver for driving on the good side, right? And then eventually he has to drive in the middle to bob and weave around the cars because the player moves faster than the cars do. But that's pretty much it. Toad's Turnpike, it's wider, man. And I feel like there's, I, I feel like there's just mo literally more congested. It's like an actual goddamn turnpike where like I'm just trying to get around and I can't on a go kart. It's guess... like you're that guy when you're driving on like the New Jersey Turnpike and you're just sitting in traffic. It's like that douche on the motorcycle who just like. You know, just starts bobbing and weaving between like all the traffic's because it's skinny enough that he can. Yeah. Except instead it. of like actually being skinny enough that he can do it, 
you're playing a heavy because you're trying to win in Mario Kart, your character's huge, and you bump into everything. Yeah. It's violent. It is. Uh, rated E for everyone, by the way. Um, so it, all shouldn't. Right. It, it, it shouldn't. Sh it shouldn't. <laughs> Have you seen that's that boomerang that's connect that's with someone? Sense. Have you actually seen <laughs> someone slip on a banana peel? Think this is okay? All right. <laughs> it's um, like America's Funniest Home Videos, dude. Just transferred over to the internet basically what Mario Kart is. But anyway, we got fourth place right here. He elected to use, uh, I think I saw him use the item strat a little bit at the beginning, but right now it's looking like he's just going four in front with the race. He's going to pick up four mushrooms here real quick, and he's going to be able to zoom up to second and only one player in front of him. It is a Waluigi player with a actually pretty decent sizable distance. And now um, this is where Kugi's just raw, raw driving skill and item management is really going to come into play here because he can't throw a red shell at this guy in front of him. It's not an option because it's just not going to hit him. He's probably not going to get at many red shells while he's in second place. Speaking probably of which, more so, he's just going to get hit by them, which yep. is going to be a lot rougher here while two red players just sneak up on, on from behind him. It's going to be so much harder for him to close the gap against this Waluigi in front of him, which by the team's format it's, uh, the is not normally is, the point, fate. but I, I it's not the way they play in the team though, circuit. You already know. Yeah, I don't know who Fate is. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's like Glenn under another guy's, but that is who is in first place at the moment. Wherever he is, he just faded Kugi. Hell! Yeah, he did. Um, so, yeah, he's on the top left in spectator mode from Kunio, which means Kunio will be hopping in this lobby, which I'm glad to see because he was just, it was just him and Knight, basically, uh, the past couple of rounds. So, at least those guys, hopefully Knight comes too, because there's definitely room in this lobby. Um, and there we go, that was a nice little pack of red players, they just didn't win. So, at, le at least there's that. <laughs> uh, also, it's okay, you're just bad. <laughs> Also, what's up, Ozranium? Good to see you. Man. Hello. Good to see you, um, friend. And yeah, I see you, uh, Moralathe. You say not always. It can sometimes be all modes from 50cc to 200cc, but is it random? I, I haven't played it too many. If it's random, that's so silly. But I mean, whatever. There are always Mario Kart tournaments being put on by somebody. You know, you just need those codes from time to time. And then there are lobbies, of course, which you can just set up together with your friends and whatnot. But as far as battle mode goes, um, I'm pretty sure you can do the same. And just please, like, before I talk about, you know, any of these formats here, before I, like, try to get into the potential logistics of it, you can play battle mode online, right? Please tell me you can do that. Uh, I'm actually not sure you can. Maybe if you have your that's own lobby, question mark. That's not true. No, I think you can. You just have to have, like, you have to build your own lobby, which would make it easier anyways. I honestly am not sure, so I don't... I I'm answering you. <laughs> but maybe yeah, yeah, that, thank you. Also, I, I, I should have realized you might you might not even know that yourself. Uh, I'm willing to try that out a little bit later. Yeah, we'll check that out later. Just to see if that's going to work. Just it's hook up like with somebody in a lobby or something real quick. Just to <laughs> see if that's going to work. Because I'm not even sure if that would be the kind of thing, Chris, that we would necessarily have <laughs> to brag. <laughs> okay, I love that. Dude, that's a... <laughs> Yo, Blaze <laughs> doing the same thing. Oh, you try hard! Wow, look at these! Look at these sons of guns! Blaze right, is Blaze one. knows what's going on. He just wants to watch. He's trying to figure it out. Blaze is actually really good at this game too. Him, yeah. and, him and Bryce, the Becker brothers are insanely good at Nintendo like games. Here we go. Here it goes. Battle of the Kongs, baby! Clash oh, of the Titans! You got your Red so Kong. You got your Blue Kong. Place your bets. The the pod <laughs> armor is, is typically with Kugi in, in these situations, but Blaze is he's 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 quite deserving of the pod armor himself. Oh, definitely saying I'm gonna blaze you up right now is Blaze over Kugi right now, who is still behind him, like farming a couple more items, and now we're Here definitely gonna see Kugi. Oh, bill. oh, never mind. I was I thought we were gonna see him just like try to run up a little bit more before we were able to uh you know, before we were going to see that bullet bill come out just so he could use it at a more optimal uh, time when he's closer to uh, when he's closer to first. Looking like that is not the case. He just decided to pop it and he actually didn't even go up that far for it. It was only two placements, unfortunately, on his end. But we're probably going to be seeing it again. He is very far back here, just riding the ledge a little bit like it's a Sonic game from 2003. And oh, yep, yeah, there we go. We got it. Wow. Kuyo. Now he's got three mushrooms. Nailing the shortcut does get himself in third place, although it is a tight race. And again, this is one of those things where you got all blue team looking to be the really competitive. Yeah, there we go. Use that bullet bill for sure. Uh, looking to be like the really competitive end of things. And speaking of which, there's Glenn on the red team finally making his first uh, Glenn Te the Team Dose Circuit 14 appearance. Uh, but yeah, so races are going to get tough towards, towards the top end. And I did see King AZ Cold, which reminds me I got to look and see. I have a feeling he either won last week or did pretty well. Uh, I think he might even have like a, like a crewmate here with him. But here we go. We got oh, wow. Kugi is in second. And to be honest with you, I've been so distracted. I didn't see how he got there. But it looks like he's just chilling. 
Um, he uh, he used that bullet bill like through the little archway on Chi's yeah, uh, on yeah, Chi's leg to really sneak something. up a lot of space for it. You can tell that's what he was trying to do the whole time. You know, in between when he was just uh, when he was just farming for those bullet bills. You know, you just you farm for the bullet bills. Hope you you you'll probably get a mushroom with it when you're that far back. You know, and you're doing the item uh, the item swapping strategy. And then when you get up the uh, when you get up in that sixth place or so because of the mushrooms, then you pop a uh, you pop a bullet bill in a place where uh, good old daddy Nintendo and uh, did not intend for us to. And that is how you wind up this far ahead. I'm surprised he still wound up only getting seventh there, but that is what unfortunately happened so for Kugi as we got Kunio at the left. Yeah, let, let me let me check this out. I'm gonna look at the old uh, top eights in Glenn's Discord server. So okay, yeah, I, I'm 100% correct. King Az Cold won last week. Uh, he actually finished at 305 and was above Kugi, who was at 302. So King Az Cold, I think, is pretty new to the user. Has only been a couple. I think he's only done team does that I'm aware of too. So maybe Tuesday is just the day that works for him. But in either case, uh, that's why we're seeing him towards the the, the higher ranks in, in all these races so far. Because uh -huh. you're seeing Kugi try some interesting things, and you're seeing him finish pretty well. Meanwhile, uh, I don't know if you noticed Mintunis, but uh, Kunio is actually registered under a different me. Uh, he, he's uh, he's Sans Undertale. I, don't know I did that. notice yeah. that. I, I was wondering what was up with that. I don't. I don't remember if that wasn't his Trying me it before. Out. I think it's. Okay. Uh, to be honest, yeah. I I never paid attention to his oh, me good. beforehand. Yeah. So I just see Sans, and I'm just not surprised. Wow. Because we're on the internet. You here. see Cunio oh, just geez. snipe with the or, or, you know snipe figure of speech with the red shell, and then knock someone off the bridge. Cold hearted man. Bro, he just hit him with the ugly. Yeah, that's that hurts. I haven't seen somebody get hit with the ugly that bad since SpongeBob, but here we go. Kunio out here showing you I love my old television. Bumping it up right here, and now it is him going up against King AZ Cold behind him with two mushrooms, actually. Probably going to take some good utilization of the shortcuts right here. Probably not the ramp. Yeah, he's going to be utilizing those two right here to go through this little gap in between the trees. That's much faster, especially if you have two mushrooms. And look at that, hanging right behind the pink gold peach, actually honking to get her to jump out of her seat a couple of times. It's just a fun little aesthetic that comes up on your screen and not the opponent's. Can you imagine if that actually, you know, made you jump every time somebody did that? Oh, like, God. if you saw it, like, on your... Like, that would be so annoying. But anyway, you got Kugio, <laughs> uh, Kugi up here K Kugia. against Fate as well, who is not Glentendo under a smurf. And to me, doesn't even look so, anything well, like the thing got is, the red shell. I know, so Glenn, is, Glenn's actually in the server, in the, in the event, legit. I don't know who Fate yeah. is. And I don't know about you, but I very much want to see Glentendo not make top eight in a team no circuit because to Damn. me personally it would be very very funny <laughs> and i want to see that <laughs> wow that's that's my that's my professional analysis dude he might be he might be he might be listening oh he probably is it's half the reason i said it anyway right. utilizing the purple nitro boost all the way up the bridge i don't know about you but on yoshi valley Whoa. i take that bridge every time every single time i actually don't even remember the other turns of the course and you know how weird and intertwined they are because i literally take the bridge every single time you know out of the starting gate i just do a full drift all the way up to purple from blue and red and then you then utilize the full uh boost uh the full boost of the mini turbo from the purple which uh was not in mario kart uh which was not in mario kart 8 that was actually added in mario kart uh 8 deluxe in Mario Kart 8, you actually only was were able to oh boost your mini turbo God. only up to red. They added purple in this game. That was a new feature. Did you just and, watch uh, what happened to Kunio? I'm sorry, I was so distracted. He got inked on and he then got, Black Mamba passed him. Dude, no, he, he got uh he got red shelled, almost red shelled yes. twice. Someone was just a little bit off on, on the invincibility. And then uh what I think he got lightning right after that, and then got passed. There was something else that happened in between there, uh, but in either case, that was rough, man, because it was looking like he might have been able to snipe that. What's Dude, he saying there? Yeah, not fair. Like it is not fair. I'm sorry, man. Anyways, it really be like yeah, that. I mean, Black Mamba. both of these me's don't have pupils. Damn, dude, Black Mama going in. He's just like, bro, I hit you. My bad. <laughs> Very rude. I can't wait for Black Mamba to finish. Oh, they got the one v one too. Be like, Damn, I'm trash. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're. Uh, I gotta see if it's. It is. It is red v blue. So you got a very, uh, a very intimate race between um, Kunio Ooh. and Black Mamba going on, and it looks like Kugi's having a party heading over to possibly. Where's he going? All right. Toad Harbor. Toad Harbor it is. Well, while he gets started, um, 
We'll battle other princesses. Yeah. Which Rosalina technically isn't a princess. I don't know, but they just made her one. But she's like she, she wears a crown, so yeah. she's a princess. She's I guess that's all that really matters. Yeah. What else, what else shout out to my shout out to my queens out there. What else you want? So I don't know, dude. And she's got like, like just, she's got like that little like, like whatever those sentient like beings are with with, with the the little lumas that like worship her. Like oh. <laughs> she's got a whole like, like a crew of people cult. that are just like yo, we got you. And they just float through space, so she seems kind of legit. Cults in space. Yeah. I'm saying. Rated R. Now play in select theaters. She's, she's the one who's got a hold over that. You don't see Peach or Daisy with that, especially not Daisy. No, nah, it's not true at all. They're, they're really hype. They got it's really hype in that they regard. Got Rosalina's just got this whole, oh, little posse. And as the snipe actually just holding the red shell out from the back of her bike and just putting it right in the face of Kunio. And now he's stuck back in second place right here. Got a little ground to make up. Meanwhile, you got Kugi over here. Going to snatch a little bit of a mushroom from his uh, teammate behind him. That link on a wiggler as he sits in pretty in this second place right here. He's got a red person in front of him. Looking like uh, it's probably Blaze who was playing this DK before up in probably. front. And Fate in front of him as well. The question is, how little will he care about the Team Doe circuit? How much of a formality <laughs> will he realize it is? How much willpower and morality said, will Kugi he have say, to toss this boomerang? directly goes, in the face yo, of fate right now. He's throwing... No, he, he waited tried. to throw oh, it he got someone. He waited. He got fate. Oh, and he gets through the... Yeah, his teammate. He did, not get the, right he did not get the identified target. But yeah, at what point did he say, bro, I'm just throwing this. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I hate... I just hate. I don't okay. know what I hate, All right, but I hate. All right, oh, my God. I'm just... I'm getting war flashbacks to when freaking Clinton threw that stupid shell back at me when we were on the same team. That was when I knew that truly just nobody gave a shit yeah. anymore. That when he just threw that back, there was no one around us, That's man. when he knew. No one around Dude. us. He literally just said in his brain, fuck Nintunas, and he just threw moment, it back at me just... and posted on Twitter for all this <laughs> stupid little clout. You're like, you know what? Tindo Circuit kind of dumb. That's what that, that was the moment. I am down to replace it with a battle mode because I think that is something else that we Dude, probably, if, if we you're play online, to... would probably not have to bracket. I don't think it would be a have, have to be too high if, effort of a thing in terms of uh, if you if you want to try and make it in terms of that it'd be fun the points would tally on their own it's a free for all which already makes for a much better format in the way that we personally run the Glintendo circuit as tournaments the team Go circuit would be a lot better if there were preset teams beforehand Agreed. but I Big really time. don't think you know we we're not you organized. Know, have enough players who are going to take that seriously it's just not practical <laughs> we're not organized not like that. interested in that. Yeah, well, you that's know, the so, thing. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a big deal. Just means we can replace it with something else. Frankly, they added battle mode into Mario well, Kart 8 Deluxe. It was another thing that wasn't in Mario Kart 8. I think, we could, I think we could give it a little love. People, my two cents. Dude, people really dug that 3D3 once it once it got um, kind of... When, once all the initial DQs set in and there was a few people playing races, like people really dug the 3D3. And I'll be real with you, too. If you're trying to get a little sweaty on that, I, I, I would I would maybe consider just opening up a bracket and just talk to Glenn about refacing the whole thing because I think that could actually make things a little exciting because we've been at mm. this now for a little over three months now. Mm -hmm. What are we at? Uh, this is 14. We're at three and a half months that these team of circuits have been getting run and streamed and all that kind of thing. It's been a while. And yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I I actually might be for that. I gotta look. I gotta think about that one a bit. I mean, it's just it's just such an amazing thing to see, you know, because as the Glintendo circuit has only grown and grown and grown in terms of players, overall players that we get on an average, which is amazing in itself, streamers, which we consistently get a very solid amount on, if not just if it's not just improving every week. Uh, more and more professional players from international regions coming out here to the Glintendo circuit, just interconnecting this world while we go through together. The Glintendo circuit has only grown and grown and grown, and the Team Doe circuit just hasn't. It has actually declined a lot it in has terms its of good like, days, the amount man. of people who's entered this. And it's just so funny to see, you know? So I think I'm very much willing you know, to try I... something like that. I would love to talk to Glenn about it. First and foremost, I personally, I gotta make sure, you know, I just gotta hop on Mario Kart or something. I gotta make sure that you can even play battle mode online. That's gonna be like I'm pretty clinically positive depressing you if you can't. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty very, sure you can. I don't very... see why they wouldn't, the thing but is, it's is... Nintendo Wi-Fi, dude, so yeah. I don't know. So, I don't know. I would say just literally the past week or two, the Team Doe circuit has kind of taken a hit in terms of attendance, but even like last week wasn't that bad. There were still 27 people. People still turn out for these, so it's not like they're, it's not like it's a totally terrible format. Everyone hates it. Like, you still get the race of people, and that's nice. I just think it can be better. 
um, is yeah. all I'm going to say. Um, and, and I guess with me saying that, that would imply, like, well, then do something, dummy. And I'm just like, all right, fine, I will. Ugh. You, you, you do a lot. So, you do a lot. Don't beat, so, your, don't beat yourself up. Well, I'm just, I, saying, I'll talk I'm to just Glenn, thinking, like, you know I'll what? Talk to Glenn Tenney, and as we're sitting here every single Tuesday. We're casting these things. Uh, from a casting angle, I think we're, we're, you know, it's coming through. From from a gameplay angle, I think the guys that we get are really doing the best that they can. I just think overall, if there was if there was a uh, just something else, it would probably be more exciting. And I do think teams brings people in because tell me you just don't get the boys that are just like, oh yeah, bro, like bring my squad and we'll win. We're we're good. Like that, yeah. that happens all the time. Oh, I remember the shit talk from yeah, the first uh, team bill circuit. So I think that might be a, a fun alternative. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Before before I totally um. <gasps> Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that's two in a row under uh he was, goes down here's the black the thing. Mamba. He's definitely a little tight and I don't blame him. Here's the thing. He was prepared for it. He knew the red shell was coming. He kept he kept the he kept his green shell because he had a green shell out from behind him. And then a CPU on the other team had a boo. -boo. Just like the one we're seeing on Damn. screen right now that just stole Kugi's item and stole his green shell while it was being held behind him right as he was taking it out. That was the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, well, Black Mom was funny proud of himself. He, there he is. Oh, yeah, he's that. definitely laughing. <laughs> there, he's a very extreme person. Whenever he does something like that, when he bodies somebody, 90% of the time, he'll come Let in the chat, and he'll do this, just, and he'll just, laugh. But just then if he loses you. a race, he'll be like, this game sucks, I'm trash, the world is trash, DK is trash, Kubi is trash, Nintunist is trash. It. It's like, they're very different extremes. He's, he, uh, Black Mamba is a passion, passionate player. At least in terms of is the emotions that come with it. You're not you're not toxic, Black Mamba. You're just playing the game. Yeah. Don't don't, feel, don't don't feel bad. It was kind of toxic though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It'd be like yeah. that, dude. I don't know. But I mean, I apologize, I dude. I mean, I wasn't on this Mario Brothers, you know, Twitter. Okay. Where like I just I'm on my Twitter feed and then I see these random Mario facts that excite you so much. Look, Kunio got a friend. He's sitting there, sitting there all Aww. by himself in whatever part Aww. of the world he's standing on. Now he's in the ocean. And there comes there's the only major. two people in the world. They should, they should date. And there's, a, there's our summary, uh, major keep him company. And now uh, it's just still going to be a rough one v one for Kunio because there's some majors usually like towards the top of the, of the uh, rankings for pretty much all of these. Yeah, that's true. Oh, and he got Toad's Turnpike. Oh, Oof. that sucks. That's like insult to injury. Kuni, I hope your day gets better, man. I I'm, I'm watching. I feel for you. <laughs> yeah, you don't even got to you don't, you <laughs> I get even it, man. use your that's, words, that's, that's wrong. You don't even have to use I your words it. right now. We just, we see you. We feel you. We understand you. Meanwhile, we get it. Meanwhile, almost a damn full lobby. Yeah, this is, and this has uh, both Sweet Lou and Ozerini, who are both chilling in chat. So what's up, guys? They finally get a little bit of screen time. We'll see what kind of shenanigans Kugi has in store. But while he's doing that, uh, we... Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, there there goes Kunio. Right on everybody's um, not favorite stage. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, this isn't Toad's Turnpike. It's Super yeah. Bell Subway. My yeah, bad. I was going to say, for a second. All right, yeah, it, it's a little better then. Definitely better than Toad's Turnpike, but still, like, you got cars and stuff. Or yeah, it, I actually hate this track too. Yeah, pretty much anything with, with other moving vehicles that aren't carts, get get it out, get it out of my my game, please. Dude, it's like the first thing that came to mind. Hey, you know what would be funny? A car racing game. Let's just have him do it in the middle of a place you should never do it. It's like I just it, whatever, man. And and on the meanwhile, we got the complete opposite end of that spectrum here in N64 Rainbow Road, which is. Definitely, I mean, maybe not in terms of like, maybe not competitively, but at least the very least casually, I can say, definitely the easiest of the three rainbow roads in this game. I mean, it has guardrails, like like that that alone yeah, should that's... tell you some stuff about it is Rainbow Road, which you know, N64 Rainbow Road in you know Mario Kart 64 also did, and like throughout the pretty much the entirety of the course as well. But rather in that game, in that game, it had little chain chomps that you know were stuck in the floor that came out to bite you. Oh yeah. Rather in, it did, didn't yeah, it? they like ran at you. Totally. Yeah, happened? you remember oh, that? Yeah, what happened? And then to those? here, and no, the chain chomps they just re they just redesigned it. The chain chomps on this version of uh, N64 Rainbow Road they just bounce up and down on the track. They're weak. 
Damn. And now there's they're not going to chomp train. anyone if they're, if, if they're doing that. They're not going to get any chomps. But there we go. There's Kooky getting first place. Uh, it looks like he's starting to just be like, all right, I guess I'll just win stuff now. Experiments are over. Um, although, to be honest with you, I didn't see if he did anything crazy in the beginning. But shout out to Snywalker for getting second. Um, it looks like Fate did drop down to uh, fourth place or so. Meanwhile, this 1v1 looks like uh, already done for, and that was probably, yeah, there, there's Ursa Major taking the first place, and Ursa Major is just so consistently good at this game. Um, like I said, constantly top eight, constant, if not like top five. Dude's good. Yeah, honest to God. Uh, right, honest to God, he see. is my friend out here to prove it to you. What's up, Jazzy G in the chat, joining the stream for us all, oh, along with Balearak Mamba. I am, I am relieved. I am relieved. Kunio has some friends. Are they Kugi's friends? Is everybody all together now? They are not social distancing. Um, okay, yeah, they're, they're, they're together. Right on. All right, that's good to see. So finally, lobbies have united. Um, that makes me want to check on the attendance one more time because... Um, there was only 10 before, but that was way earlier, so I'm going to get a, a refresh on that. And, God, I can't believe I have to hard reset this game just to get an update on scores. But <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna not be such a baby about it. Cause no, is, it's, 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 I, dude, you can, you can be as much of a baby about that as you want. It's okay. I, that's, a, that's an annoying thing. I mean, thankfully, it's quick. You know, the Switch is, the switch is uh, what, am I, what, what am I trying to say? The Switch's UI is uh, very fast, probably because of how plain it is. You know, there's just like no like big designs or anything like that, like no giant Tifa wallpaper yeah, that you no, got on your that you that. got on your PS4. You know, mm -hmm. crazy man. It's been years. I'm surprised they never added any new themes besides white and black. It's kind of kind of nuts. For Switch, because not everything is white and black. Dude, the friend. thing about this is the interface. I just look at the eShop interface and, and the Switch, and I just wonder why it isn't so much more. Why isn't it more? Why is it really difficult navigating the eShop? Why? I, I don't know. I can't answer these questions. All I can tell you I is that I think one is. of the things that they were marketing, like, along with the Switch was just simplicity. I, I think the Switch, you know, like, was Nintendo's way of saying, like, hey, we're done with gimmicks. You know, like, it's a normal console, except now it's also handheld if you want it to be, which is a gimmick, but it's not the kind of gimmick you have to do to play your games. Other than that, we're finally made, like, a relatively normal console, like so many people were saying they would, because, you know, they released the Wii, which was a gimmick, and it was really amazing at first, and then it got old, and then, you know, they just didn't change with that when the Wii U came around. So now, I, I think they just kept it basic because they just wanted to keep everything basic and just focus their energies elsewhere. I understand if that's what they did. I understand their reasoning for doing that. But th at the same time, I think it's lame. You know, they released a bunch of themes on the 3DS. I don't know why they still haven't done it with the Switch. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't, sometimes, oh, this is the problem I think most people, most the, the, the common Nintendo player has with, with Nintendo. It, Nintendo is actually great. Fantastic company, at least in my humble opinion. Um, providing all kinds of entertainment and been doing it for a lot of years, uh, whatever. But the problem is, is sometimes the technology and the, and the means they use feel outdated. Like in this particular case, just something as simple as like a user interface that helps you like download games and, and use the system fully. Not being there, it sucks, dude. Um, but who knows? Maybe maybe they'll figure that out. Maybe point, maybe maybe baby. I mean, they, you know, I feel like they're just really really hyper focused on making good games. Well, they. I, I think that's really what their focus is, and I think it's why their Wi-Fi sucks. I think it's why, like, you know, some, like, certain things get complained about. It's because the quality of their actual games, 95% of the time, just so damn good. Oh, you know? my so God, like, look really, at that. Yo. That was a photo finish. That was literally a photo finish. Googie literally was in, we went from second to first, back to second again, right at the very last moment. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus Cristo, that was amazing. Wowee. So, let's see that. Yeah, that's fate right at the end. Uh able to clutch it and okay so that was actually close between three people that was my confusion i thought it was two so yeah that was fate coming out on top ha huh? and then with ursa major and then kubi or i'm sorry ursa major got third but you know what i mean sure i, I know what you yeah, mean. yeah yeah, yeah you got it you got it you got it <laughs> right, well. well either way pretty full lobby here we got all of our kings over on the blue team here wrapping up wrapping it up for you guys red team looking a little sad but they might be able to bring this back as it comes along depending on how much they feel like playing as teammates you got ron weasley over at the right right there stole harry's glasses and it was just dancing with sands it's not something i expected to see tonight uh, that's, that's exactly that's, uh, what i wound up seeing ron weasley is actually blaze <laughs> <laughs> that's blaze oh shit. yeah <laughs> i'm sorry but anyway oh snes rainbow road see... specifically cuneo's one 
very happy to see this one over Cloud Top Cruise personally. I like this track over Cloud Top Cruise personally. I talked about it with Knight at Sunday. You know, we both agreed that uh, I called the uh, I called what do you call it? I called the Beanstalk at the end very awkward, but with its shortcut and its weird angle. And yep. he said, yeah, that's like the perfect word for it. It's very awkward. It just feels weird to race on it. Meanwhile, here on SNES Rainbow Road, classic Rainbow Road. You know, no guardrails or nothing like that. Some tight corners every now and again, and more than anything, just an absolutely beautiful ambient atmosphere. Uh, reminiscent of the SNES era of gaming because you see those little Mario, uh, those little Super Mario World uh, uh, mountains in the background. Th those are literally derived exactly from that. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. You know, you play like, um, if you play the different Mario spin-off games from like the different eras of uh, Nintendo's consoles, you can tell like they're always like loosely based on whatever, you know, the latest Mario game was. Like you play Super Mario Kart, all the levels are designed, you know, like from Super Mario World type levels, Mario 64, uh, Mario Kart 64 for Mario 64, blah, 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 Double Dash, a lot of sunshine-based levels. It, it's it's a really sick thing to see how the franchise has evolved throughout the years, at least aesthetically in that department. You know, so I, I don't know. It's just as a as a super diehard Mario fan, it's just something that I, as a major Nintendo nerd, very much appreciate seeing. And speaking of appreciate seeing, I also appreciate... Ooh, I also appreciate good shell management from Kugi right there. Not even holding that red shell behind him to avoid it. And oh my god, going up the middle when he didn't even have a mushroom, utilizing his mini turbo to get that boost to go all the way across. That's actually, that was actually pretty scary. That was a, that was a big risk to doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, he, yeah, he's making a couple of pretty big jumps on the stage. And I think you already mentioned how stressful the stage could be. And we were talking about earlier with the fences and everything. Yeah. Uh, so making those big moves like that one we just saw. Uh, a lot more difficult than it looks. Sometimes catching those corners the right way and not flying off the map is, is its own undertaking, let alone mm -hmm. really advancing on it. And luckily for Kugi, uh, it does have a banana on deck to protect against any of those uh, red shells that might come his way. But he does look safe. That is Lewis right behind him. And I'm not sure if that is Lemon T. Lewis or just like Lewis. But uh, sure enough, Kugi will hold on to get first. Lewis getting second uh, using the Inkling, so maybe not Lemon T. Yeah, like, I was going to say, he normally plays Toad. Yeah. Well, and there you go, Kugi, with that good placement over on the SNES Rainbow Road race. Really sick thing to, uh, really sick thing to see. And ooh, very interesting options this time around. Dragon Driftway, Cloudtop Cruise, and Womp Ruins, which it looks like our man Ron Blaze Weasley is going to go ahead and vote for right there. Very, ooh, very mixed bag. Got two votes of each and one random on the part. Two random on the part of Cunio, completely even. Not sure what the rest of these votes are going to be. Is that actually everybody in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? One, yeah, that's actually just about all of them already that's in this lobby already. So, wow, it's actually a dead 25% chance for all of these tracks that we got right. Oh, no, there was one more person in the lobby. There they oh, are. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Three people I shy wasn't of a full lobby. Let's go. Thwomp, Brute. No, never mind. No, just Dragon kidding. Brookway. All right, well, I, I forgot, I was just check on scores. Um, I'm just curious if any more people have entered because technically you could still enter if you want, if you're just looking for games. Uh, use a code on the top right. It's all open, uh, all free. The actual team scores are our averages, not just uh, total team scores because those would just be even more inaccurate considering that um, you know the teams are constantly uneven. And so, okay, so we're at, we're at 16 people overall. Let me see how uneven it is. Oh, not, not bad, not bad. Uh, seven people versus nine people on the blue team. So seven red, nine blue. So at least it's evened out a little bit. Um, as far as the averages go, um, I'll save that math because it's going to be changing a lot right now. All right. All right, now I don't know if he's far enough back at this point where Kugi is going to elect to do an, uh, elect to do a little bit of an item strat. It's looking like that's not going to be the case. I don't know if he's doing that because there are less CPUs in the lobby or something, or if he just feels like know. he's far enough ahead to the point where that's going to work. That Either way, possible. he is chilling way back in ninth right now, I believe, behind pretty much every human player. Here comes a bullet bill right in a very narrow part. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. It's terrifying, man. Just uh, like just you're racing and you see that giant thing behind you. It's scary, man. I, I remember, um, oh, God, oh, that, had to, no. that had to have been one of his teammates or something that actually bumped into him because he... He, he had a star that uh, that uh, that guy that bumped into him did, but um, he didn't get put into hit stun. So I think that was actually one of his teammates right there that bumped into him. Was enough to knock him off, though. 
So, awesome. I don't know. This should actually ease the tension a little bit. He got a blue shell, which is only going to hit the nearest red person, which is not his teammates. So he's actually going to hit somebody more so in the middle ground with that blue shell, which is going to allow this bullet bill to launch him up way further than it initially could be because he's not hitting the person in front, rather hitting the people in the middle. So now he was able to zoom all the way up to... Uh, all the way up to fourth because of that uh, good item utilization. All right, well, we're going to see. Uh, we should have been watching Kuniel out of this race. He's currently sitting in second with uh, the home stretch coming up, and I'm going to assume that maybe that's Fate in front of him. I know Fate has been the Waluigi who's been kind of towards the top of the ranks, at least for today. So, I, yeah, it looks like he's pretty much already finished. So, hopefully, if Kuniel has any sort of luck. Oh, man, I should have just not said anything. Ooh, it's going to be fifth. Oh. Baby's first okay. commentator's oh, curse. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. So, anyways, <laughs> there we go. There, there's Fate coming in first. Uh, as I presumed, Blaze coming second, and Cunio getting that big old shaftaroo. Uh, coming in, ended up in fifth, looking like he would should have been in second, but sometimes that is just how it goes. And I think that's like a whole level of gameplay you have to get past in general. Maybe it's even more mental, like when you're just so subject to items and knowing ways to maybe work around it because. I feel like to the to the untrained eye, there's nothing you can do about it. But then it's like you see the way some of these racers mani like manipulate the items. Like we got to see Kugi do earlier. Some of the other guys, uh, like like when Knight was in commentary with us, explaining to us like how item staggers work. Like there are ways to sort of, I guess, be prepared, sort of, kind of, but not even necessarily. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There's some ways, but then some others that you can't. It's just something that you got to keep in the back of your mind. And it's different when it comes to the Team Doe circuit, but, right? Like, because uh, as we get a little bit of a score Cunio's update, you guys actually right in the lead, Cunio is the in the lead. Yeah, wow. How about that? That's cool, man. So what's looked like a, a little bit of a rough go for him has been enough to get, have first at the moment. So, And this is about halfway. Better than halfway, actually. We're, we're better than halfway through these because I believe this is like the 16th or 17th race coming up for, for both of these guys. I'm not sure. I think one's ahead of the other. There there we go. 16th race. I'm paying attention. 17th race. Told you. So we are coming towards the end here. So having that sort of like lead at the moment, is it, it means something. Uh, Kugi's race behind and is still, you know, only four points behind. But either way. Still nice to be in first, uh, and then, you know, just in case you guys missed it, Blaze currently sitting in third, first person from red uh, in the top eight, and then there's Fate, Blue Team, EO, Drayden, both airing, uh, airing from red, and then Ursa Major, Snywalker in the top eight. Let's go. That's a pretty stacked one to hear if I've ever done did hear it before, and right now on Sweet Sweet Canyon, a track that's can I say what can I even say about Sweet Sweet Canyon, man? I feel like it's like a little too sweet. <laughs> a little too sweet. It depends on, the tea. on how you use it. It can be just as salty, my friend. Yeah, I, guess I so. feel, but I agree. I feel like it might be a little, a little too sweet, especially looking around. I feel like I'm just kind of getting a cavity just looking at it. But uh, anyway, like I feel like it's a track that is like not necessarily hit or miss. I, I feel like it's a little overlooked. I, I really don't feel like there's too, too much. That's all. And my, this is just in my opinion. So, like, Reed, please take it with a grain of salt. I feel like there's not too much that really makes it stand out that much. I personally find this track to be kind of boring, actually, in its layout. I don't really like that whole section, like the whole zero gravity section that Kunio yeah. was just on, where you just have to go, like, up and down for pretty much no reason. I, I feel like if that was removed from the track, like, yeah, aesthetically, it would look a little worse, but it would make it a much better, like, competitive track, if you would, because there would be just be more, like solid ground for you to be able to race around rather than just like this giant section where you just go up and down just because like oh hey you can you can go up and down at a certain part of the track it's zero gravity isn't that cool i feel like so many tracks like take good utilization of the fact that there's zero gravity but then some on some tracks i feel like it's i feel like the gimmick was just a little forced but then again i don't know i mean there's gimmicks in just about every mario kart game so who am i to judge the funny part about this stage is obviously it came before um it came out before Odyssey did, but it really reminds me of the world in Odyssey. Yes! Yes! You oh my god, it's about? just like the Luncheon Kingdom. Yeah, that's the one. Anyways, there's Fate. I, I never even back, thought about Back that. to back wins uh, with Ozzarini and with the big second place. Let's go. EO right behind him. Kunio coming in fourth. But yeah, so uh, the reason I bring that up because I feel like Nintendo has these worlds that they just want to like push and create, you know? And it's like they have a whole concept, and they just kind of move it per game whenever it comes up. Like, 
I wonder if they did base it. They're just like, oh, you got this. So this we have this Mario Kart track. Base the whole world off of it. Yeah, honestly, that might be the case if they did that. I mean, I'm sure they based a lot of the worlds off certain things. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I don't know the actual details of it, but I imagine that the courses in this game were not all, you know, I, I don't know if they were all headed by the same person or not, but I would imagine that they were very open to different ideas, you know, like as like those boardroom meetings probably go. It's just like, yeah, I've, I, I've worked in a writer's room before. I imagine, you know, like it's just people bouncing ideas off each other. Let's have one, like, you know, the wood. Besides like the obvious ones you have to have, like, what is this game? Is Bowser's Castle going to be? What's this Rainbow Road going to be? Blah, blah, blah. What are our beach courses going to look like? I'm, I'm sure they have like certain ideas for new courses, like Wildwoods, as we see Kugi get in the lobby here at the right. The Wildwoods is not the kind of stage that we've really ever had in Mario Kart 8 or Mario Kart before. I, I don't think there have been very many, if any, forest levels throughout all of Mario Kart. I mean, there have been jungle levels, obviously, like because of DK being in the game, but not too many forest ones. So this this course that you're seeing at the right, I assume, was technically a new idea to the uh, to the to Mario Kart as a whole. So. I'm sure they just have like probably some different like uh, sparring it process feels... for like the creative process and determining new levels and whatnot. Us? And then of course, you know, you have half the stages in the game, which are just, you know, retro tracks, of course, which I very much appreciate them being recreated. Honestly, this, this stage feels very Donkey Kong to me, even though it's not Donkey Kong. Yeah. I think it's just because it's just like, you know, foresty. Exactly. You know, I mean, what are, how many differences are there between a forest and a jungle? I actually don't answer that. Yeah, you know what? I probably won't. I wouldn't even <laughs> know. I wouldn't even know where to begin. So, anyways, <laughs> please do not answer that. Actually, let's let's see. What anyway, this... uh, yeah, there were forest levels in DK too. I mean, you ever go to World Five? It's like Forest Frenzy, classic DK sure. levels. There are forest levels in that game too. I don't blame it for being like Donkey Kong like. Speaking... I mean, Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. This is making are, me want to. They are literally Freeze, regarded as two uh... of the greatest platformers ever made. I'm not kidding. They are. Like, they're they amazing. are. They're incredible. Freaking games, Both really dude. good games. Very good yeah, games. Tropical Freeze is on Switch, in case you want to try that out. Unfortunately, uh, it is wish, still $60. I, was gonna say, I wish it wasn't drop six, prices for shit. Dude, I would buy that in a heartbeat for 40 bucks. Same, same, 40 bucks, same, same, I, same. But like, I'd buy it on release never day. dropped it. I'd buy it on release day. Anyways, Kugi's having a rough outing. Meanwhile, Kunio looks like he's trying to get this win finally, uh, despite being up in points. Constantly getting nabbed right at the finish. So I'm going to just really hope that this lead that he has right now is is enough to sort of buy him uh, first place, at least this time around. Is he gonna have that? Oh, doesn't even need the green shell to fight off that red shell. Makes it back comfortably, let's go. Um, so nice. there we go, Kunio getting the big dub. Makes it happen, I know a, a lot of the chat was also in this race, so. Uh, yeah, there we go, there's there's King Cold, Osranium, Sweet Lou. Um, yeah, right on. So let's go back and check how Kugi's doing. Uh, spoiler alert, not great. So here comes 10th place finish, 9th place, ninth place finish. And that one hurts a little bit because I feel like he started off that one normal and it just sort of, he got a little Mario carded. I'm going to chalk that up to the I just don't give a crap about Team Doe today sort of deal. Even though it does look like he's beating himself up over it. And I, I, I wish he wouldn't. But I, but I definitely can under, understand and appreciate it. Yeah, maybe he just saw the fact that DK was literally beating himself up for it. Yeah, and I, so you know, maybe he just took some inspiration. Sure, I could see that. Yeah, tragic. But we got two pretty fill lobbies here. The left we got Sweet Lou, Osdranium, Black Mamba, Kunio, and King Azzy Cold. So it's actually a pretty good one for as relative for what we got from these uh, from these players in the Team Bill circuit. Meanwhile, on the right, looking like they're oh, looking like they are actually going to Toad's Turnpike. Oh boy. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Not uh meanwhile on the left here we got Cloud Top Cruise, a stage that has uh, you know yeah, I, as I've just, you know, gotten okay. you know, played more and more in the Team Bill circuits. It's or not the Team Bill circuits, just Quantendo circuits in general. A stage that I used to love as a casual and then just playing competitive Mario Kart a little more has sort of waned on me a little bit. Meanwhile, we got Toad's Turnpike, a track that nobody really likes at all, hailing from Mario Kart 64, but much like all the other 64 tracks, very revamped. It doesn't really look exactly like how it did before. No, Obviously, you couldn't ride on the walls in the old game. I swear to God, there are more cars now. I swear to God, there it were does... not this many cars on the 64 version. I'd have to go back and verify. I sort of forget, but I wouldn't be surprised, and maybe that's just sort of like a graphical slash game engine ability to like, handle it, but who, who, who knows, man. I do I'm... have my 64 on my desk right next to me, and it's hooked up to my CRT. I'm trying to I can flex literally on just me, bro? Two, two clicks of a button. I could check right now, I'm but I mean, I got a job to do. 
All right. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy here. Both these are just sort of um, like half full, <laughs> uh, and also in the <laughs> also in the middle. So uh, really hard to know what's going on because we already know like what happens in the third laps in a lot of these races. But at least both of these guys, like Kunio and Kugi, both. In, in pretty good positions, uh, we all know how quickly that could change at a moment's notice, but in the meanwhile, it seems stable until until you see something big happen, but at least they're both safe from blue shells for the most part. They have teammates in front of them both, um, so it's really just a matter of making the right moves. So barring any sort of big lightning accidents or major passes, but especially in Kugi's race, it looks like one and two is pulling ahead a bit. There's the blue shell right on cue. So that might actually get Kugi uh, first place, depending how far ahead Fate is. And there he is, just passes him. Meanwhile, Kunio more towards the middle of his final lap, and Kugi slowing down a little bit. Probably not convinced that all the heavy hitting weapons are, are done yet, and they might not be. But running out of track, gonna have to make a little bit of a move. There's the yeah, this shell. is where you kind of have to worry about lightning because I go. haven't seen very much lightning from either oh, of these players. No. So you gotta hope that the just the red team CPUs are not pulling it out. Did, now know. he's got items. I gotta tell you, uh, usually Kuki has really good judgment on the item usage, but th that time around he kind of threw the red shells and they both hit the back of the uh, what's it called? They hit the they hit the back of the uh, bus, so they broke. But anyways, that stinks. Anyways, uh, King Cold going to win on the other side of things. Kunio coming in second. Sweet Lou in third. So that's going to be a blue team sweep. All right. Good on them, my friends. Immediately choosing Cheese Land. And uh, Shy Guy Falls is another one in here. I don't. I didn't see what that third one was. A uh, Kugi voted very, very quick in that one. I actually can't really tell, unfortunately. But, uh, well, oh, yeah, it looks like it was Piranha Plant Slide. Okay, hailing from Mario Kart 7. This time around, we all seen it plenty of times. The one with the giant piranha plant, mm -hmm. water slide. I was, you know, I wasn't a fan of that one at first, but it's grown on me. Meanwhile, at the left, thank Finally, God, I'm very Mount happy to see Mount Wario over Neo Bowser okay. City. Okay. Personally, I hate Neo Bowser City. I just, I, I'm sure Neo Bowser City is much like New York in the fact that the rent is probably ridiculous, <laughs> and you know, it's probably just not worth it. I, I this, it, it's gross, man. I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Talking about a place where the beer flows by like wine. I'm talking about Mount Wario. Amen to that. That's actually a dumb and dumb reference. I just realized how young the demographic is here, and they probably won't understand that. So. Oh shit. My, my my apologies. I've actually never seen it. <gasps> All right, that's okay. No big deal. Old classic. You just gasped. Yeah, you old, just gasped. it's an old classic. <gasps> okay. it's, it's an old classic. And I'm just realizing. That. No, I mean I'm, I'm familiar with it. I've just never yeah. seen it. Jim Jim I'll, I'll Vintage Jim Carrey. If, if you're into that kind of thing. Hey. Oh, yeah, dude, Jim Carrey, definitely Jim Carrey's plenty of movies. Yeah, so uh, that that is about as vintage as it gets. But anyways, um, I think today is probably a blue dominant day, uh, which we kind of saw earlier on, and they do have the number advantage, even if it's only by two right now. Uh, oh, Googie kind of being a wild man right now, I'm not really sure. He's laughing, though. I do think he, he's working through something um, as far as, like, strategy or just – Getting a little experimental with the courses and the items and, and, and whatever. When he's yeah. not falling. Just mushrooming off the level right there. It probably doesn't even matter because he's just hits the first lap. He's going to oh. be able to get some pretty good items farmed here. And there you go. Going to use this golden mushroom to the best of his ability. See how far up he can get with it. Going to nab one more item and get a little bit closer before he decides to pop this one right here. See, he's just going to jump right mm -hmm. in between. Pop this first one. He actually might even get another bullet bill, considering the fact that he's got Blaze Dude, in front of him rocking his like... and using the same strategy right yeah, now. Yeah. Looking like he's going to be held back. Him and Blaze doing the same thing, I'm noticing. Uh, really interesting to see that, where you have two guys doing somewhat of a, I guess we'll call it a pro strat, where you're taking advantage of the item uh, distribution. And I I take that as a very positive sign, uh, as the players in these circuits just getting more and more sort of woke to the ways they get really good at this game. Mm. And this is the second time that these two players have actually elected to use this strategy against each other on this particular track in this tournament actually oh, yeah, they were you're both right. on cheese land earlier on and they were both doing the same thing so i don't know what it is about cheese, cheese land that land. makes them try to invoke the cheese but it's looking like that's their strategy coming out here and now we got kugi all the way up and forth meanwhile kunio finishes second over on the last race 
King AZ Cold above him, Sweet Lou below him, and Osiranian Black Mamba below him at that. So a good W for the blue team right there. And speaking of Ws for the blue team, fourth place is going to be the final for Pui right here with Fate above him. And then Lewis and Ursa Major at the top right there. Rocking 175 points already. Good yeah, golly gosh. Well, That's a pretty good one uh, right there. Keep in mind, uh, definitely a good score, but they are uh, probably running out of races. So I would say what... That was either the 19th or something like that, so we're only uh, one circuit away, one traditional circuit away from finishing out this larger circuit. Uh, and when I say that, I do really just mean four races for anyone unfamiliar, but you guys are all experts anyways, so you already knew that. Um, I don't know what happened to Cunio. He might be in another small lobby again. I actually think I saw a communication error on the side here, so it seems possible. Um, yeah, and there we go. Uh, just 1v1. I don't even see him in there. What happened? I don't. I don't. Who are you looking for? The, the, and oh, 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 you're right. You see how it just says Snywalker and uh, Drayden. Oh, I think he he joined and he's spectating. Okay. Yeah, Immediately, yeah, that's what's going on right here. So it's looking like over here we got a one v one between Snywalker and Drayden and Snywalker. Looking like he's on the lower end of that right there, just swinging that sword all around. And there is a lightning from the blue team right there, as you can tell. You saw the uh, the lights get a little bit dark, but. You see Sire Skywalker not shrinking that time around. This is what I'm talking about, my friends. Knight told us on Sunday, you know, lightning from the CPUs, you know, as far back as they are, you know, when the CPUs get that far back, you know, they're going to be getting some good items. You know, you can pretty much predict when they're going to get the lightning. It's just something else you have to play around. But that chance becomes even slimmer in the Team Doe circuit because now the CPUs are essentially divided in half or literally divided in half in the case of Kunio's race right there in which Skywalker is going to take second and trade it in front of him. So your chances of getting hit by the lightning are a li technically a little bit lower, I believe, depending on how the AI is racing against each other. Provides a little bit of a, some sort of questionable RNG for this game, but like our good friend Knight said, currently in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there really is not very much we can do about that. But what Kugi can do is elect to do some good driving right there, getting the red turbo right there to make sure he's able to get in front of the pink gold peach player right there to make sure he is stuck in first right here. No good items to be able to protect himself just yet, but his luck might change right now. We'll see what happens. Um, already in a really good position. He's got a pretty decent... Uh, oh, there we go. I say that, but there's Blaze breathing right down his neck. Uh, that was Donkey Kong on the red team right behind him. Um, but we'll see. Actually, Kuki rebounding pretty well from that last hit. Um, and this is more the position that I think Kuki is traditionally in, where he's just kind of, kind of just doing the races straight up and just racing really well. And there's that pink gold peach um, and EO right there. So Kugi has plenty of company. And going to look to see how he gets past it. As, uh, EO's got the defenses up. Kugi tried to snipe him from the side and nearly got him. But now uh, EO just kind of has that shell ready there to protect him. That was excellent break drifting on the part of Kugi Koops right there. He was going fast enough to the point where he would have actually, if he was just holding the accelerate button like a lot of other players would, would have uh what am i trying to say would have job would have just accelerated right into the uh right into eo's protection because he had a green shell behind him instead he kept snaking just to get those uh just to get those mini boosts out to make sure he'd be able to get back up to max speed instantaneously but he knew that if he kept doing that and just kept holding the accelerate button he would have driven right into it so he was actually brake drifting holding brake and drifting behind eo right there to make sure he can not only get his mini boost out in time but to also make sure he stayed far enough behind him. And as a result, he's going to wind up all the way up in first, and EO is going to fall from that exchange down to fourth. That is actually, one, in my opinion, some of the harder tech, or like our little known tech, yeah, break drifting, that absolutely. a lot of players really don't seem to use very much. But Kugi, definitely a little too good for that at this stage in the game. He's going to utilize it, and that's how he's going to secure that W. Yeah, we're just starting to see him use it a lot today. I actually can't even really think of a lot of times I've seen him use it in the past, but it looks like he's... Really starting to get the uh, the tech down and start to, yeah I just saw that and really starting to, really starting to use it so uh, that, that's good anyone who's getting the watch and, and sort of enjoy Kugi's gameplay can sort of take from that yeah sometimes you just get stuffed dude uh, when, when you're trying to throw stuff that happens I'm sorry that that was just funny <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't resist yeah, I, I knew that was gonna happen man I mean I saw like I saw exactly where Drayden was in position in front of Kunio right there and I told myself. Yo, discipline yourself. Discipline yourself, my son. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just wait a minute. And he didn't wait. <laughs> and he just threw it behind him. And Drayden is actually still ahead of him for it, but looking like 
Oh, yes for Long, because that is a red team blue shell right there that is going to take out Ursa Major right there, while Kunio is going to be able to advance to third. Throwing that boomerang in front right there, just not narrowly out of range of Drayden right there, not able to get it again. Drayden just narrowly eluding him, but oh, no, never mind. Looking like he actually did hit him with that uh, third one. My mistake. Yeah, got Will him. Be able to get ahead of him, though? No, Drayden had a mushroom as... <gasps> no, his teammate actually comes in clutch for him. As Miguel wow. starts a voice chat on Nintendo Switch online voice chat on the app. Wow, that's <laughs> People nuts. People use that? <laughs> that's cool, man. Let's go Kunio using the Nintendo tools. Okay. People use that? All right, all right. I respect it. Oh, I... I well, I, Nintendo's I telling you to I, use it. Or, yeah. I mean, you, right? That's the point. Yeah, Nintendo, you're the best. Yeah, thanks for really looking out for our best interest. Anyways, <laughs> <Thank> uh... <you. laughs> yeah, Jesus, shout out to that Nintendo. That was crazy finish to that race. Yeah, so these guys finally meeting up once again. Kunio and Kugi. In what appears to be... Yeah, three short of a full lobby. Actually, I'm not sure. We might still be waiting on someone else to pick their stage. Nope, never mind. Oh, yep, there it is. Only missing two. Hmm... Yeah, we got all these players standing around. Uh, looks like over there on Kugi's side, they're over just chilling in Europe, Great Britain, over on the left right there, while meanwhile, yeah, yeah. Uh, mainland China, for like the, the rest of them on the right. Just chilling around yeah. the world right now. Crazy Speaking other... of around the world, looks like we're heading to the airport. Yeah, how about that? Sunshine presumably, Airport. Uh, presumably what? Wait, what? What, what, were, you, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no, you... no, 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 20, okay, never mind. 20, 20 second race if, if you're Kunio. Okay. All right, Sunshine <laughs> Airport. I think this is the first time we've seen this track all day. Uh, uh, you might be right. Yeah. You I mean, we can't right. mathematically see every track in the game, even though somehow RNG was on our side and we got a different one every time for the, for the stream, at least with these two in the same lobby, that wouldn't work. At least not for today, because there are only 24 races and there are only two streamers who happen to be on the same team in the team build circuit today, so that's not exactly going to work out as much. But here, Sunshine Airport, a track that, like, it, it, it's got its meta. It's a track that has its meta, and I've learned this from watching a lot of the good players on this track. Like, you know, right there, like, uh, not, not not right there. You'll see it once, uh, you'll see it once Kugi gets to it again. The part where you're uh, in beyond baggage claim. What am I trying to say right here? The part where you're on, <laughs> like, the runway, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, right before the runway where you're in, like, the open airplane. Like, you see, like, here's the plane right here. You're going to go around and you can actually drive in that open airplane. You're going to see Kugi probably do the optimal strat right here, which is to land this drift and actually just go downwards because you're able to land a trick off of that ramp. Uh, uh oh, no, not should I say. Off the side of the ramp rather than the ramp itself, which actually allows you to get the mini uh, turbo boost way quicker because you uh you land on the ground way quicker because you just fall to the ground rather than get like the sort of height boost that you get from the boost ramp instead so you're gonna see them slide down that one on the right right there instead to be able to get a quicker boost and then as a result a much faster route by going underneath the plane instead of through it right there i mean sometimes they'll like to go through it if they really need an item but i feel like most of the time i mean they'll go down because their item their item blocks down there too so you know that that's something that always just was so in the back of my mind whenever I saw Sunshine Airport because I would just go down that middle track every time. Then I saw players like Vertex and Kugi always do what Kugi's doing right here because there are item blocks down there too, as well as just able to land a quick uh, a quicker boost from just utilizing gravity in this game. So it's just a much more optimal strategy that you're going to see a lot of the higher level players do. Yeah, you definitely catch some of that here. <clears throat> some of those uh, optimal strategies and speaking of optimal strategies, those look like Kugi has a pretty good lead. I'm going to guess that that's Ursa Major right behind him. Uh, Lightning might not be as big of an impact, although here comes what is presumably Blaze right there. Kugi narrowly gets that. Oh my, oh my god. Oh, oh my geez. lord. That is stressful. Kugi's relieved to have finished. I don't blame him. Holy crap, man. Um, nicely done. That's going to be a first place for him. Meanwhile, Kunio finishing up at sixth place. Um, not too bad. Not at all. Blaze all just narrowly ending that behind him. That would have been huge for the red team, too, because as you can, as you can see right below Kugi, there are three red team members in second, third, and fourth place, respectively, so that would have been quite the dub if Blaze was able to surpass Kugi right there, and he knew it was close just from turning around. Right here, we got Toad's Turnpike in the lobby again, looking like we're going to go to the other Toad stage in Toad's Harbor for Kunio's vote. Looks like Kugi made that same vote as well. We got Sherbert Land as well. One of my personal favorite tracks in this game. I love the music on it. I love this general ambiance and atmosphere. 
looking like nobody's voting for Toad's Turnpike, at least not yet, and nobody has. They Watch shouldn't. us get in in random. They, they, oh, God, stop. They, Watch. Mm, it's going to happen. You I ready? I don't want to. It's going to happen, Come dude. On, man, I don't want this. It's going to happen. I don't want this. Don't do this. Wait, wait. All right, nice. Oh. nice. <laughs> oh, there, there's still it's a so Toad, close. but that's okay. Toads yeah, are welcome. Yeah. Toads Turnpikes. GTFO. Okay, so close to the end here. I think this is just two more races left for Kunio and three. Or, I'm sorry, two more races left for Kugi, which would mean one more race left for Kunio after this. And then that's it. Um, and then, yeah, we won't get the thing that we had on Sunday where we get to kind of see the tournament to the finish. Uh, th this tournament is technically live until 9. So all of the actual finished results and, and end game results and placings won't officially be done until a little later. Although I will check if we're still only at whatever it was. I think what, what were we at? Like 12 attendants or something? 13? Uh, th or no, I think it was 16. If that number hasn't changed, then uh, we probably have a pretty good look at what it's going to end up as. Mm, most likely at this point, especially with the amount of... Uh racers we've had in this tournament thus far relatively smaller amount of streamers today but looking like we're getting a bomb here in third place he's got two red people in front of him i feel like right now kugi's in an actual lobby where he's gonna have to race against actual red people because he's got eo and blaze just to name two ahead of him here and he is actually gonna hit them both with that bomb my god what a precision snipe but is he gonna land on the boat oh no that would have been so hype if you landed on the boat out of the lag of that blue shell right there but unfortunately it just wasn't enough it's funny because i feel like he actually would have suffered more lag had he done that but just the precision of getting hit by an item like the blue shell an item that launches you in the air and then landing on like a platform in mario kart mm -hmm. i don't know i just think that would have been kind of funny to see yeah mario kart's always good for some for some nice laughs isn't it yeah, there are plenty of games that can make you do that. You ever play TF2? Oh, yeah, of course. Dude, I, the way the body's like ragdoll in that game mm. always just gives me a good chuckle. Dude. It's definitely a big one, man. These guys, oh, oh no, Kugi <laughs> tried to get the jump on the bus or the, or the trolley end up in. Wow, you almost never see anyone take that shortcut anymore. But anyways, yeah. there it is. Uh, and he's in temp right now, so uh, you're starting to see him move a little bit different. Sense of urgency finally kicking in. You know, Kunio really not in a much better off position, just ahead of Kugi. Um, and they're both going to have to sweat a little bit hard because the pack starting to break into it now. See you later, EO. There's the red shell, or I'm sorry, the blue shell, excuse me. It does look like okay. it is headed right for, I'm going to guess it's Ursa Major, probably that hit. Oh, look out for that Piranha Plant. You don't want to get in by that. that I is do believe like, that's his teammate's Piranha Plant. I don't think it's home. Okay, yeah, home. yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, and it was Snywalker again who had the heartbreaking uh, uh, Piranha Plant actually on this stage against Kugi <laughs> uh, just on Sunday, which is really funny to, to see like the same sort of things in play. Wow, well, okay, he's going to sneak. I think, what's that, fifth place? Not bad. He's. I think he's just like, I'll take it. Might not love it, but I'll take it. Oh. Meanwhile, Kunio uh, getting beat up at the end. That hurts. Uh, is going to finish in eighth. But uh, Lewis coming in first. Not sure who Lewis is, but uh, welcome. These Rosa are just holding her heart, dude. Like, like you got eighth place, and she's having like a panic attack. Oh my it's God, I've never seen that animation man. before. It doesn't work like that in space. No, I'm just so much used to that animation being like, you know, her Rosalina's happy animations because, like, you know, Kugi used to main Rosalina in this game, and he would always just win. So, like, I would only ever see like yeah, Rosalina's true. like victory animations or her happy ones rather than like the sour ones. But instead, we got Kunio actually playing Rosa this week rather than his usual Link. So we're, I'm not very used to seeing that animation, but looking like Yoshi we're going to have Valley. Yoshi Valley as Kunio's last race here. Yikes. And Kugi's second to last. Yoshi Valley, just, you know, track with multiple pathways. lets the player really explore themselves a little bit, but everybody just uses the bridge anyway, because I'm pretty sure it's literally the fastest way, as you're going to see from Kugi with what he's going to do right out of the gate right here. Just watch these two players, and I'd be willing to bet dollars to donuts that they're going to take a hard purple drift here. Here's the blue, here's the red, here's the purple, and never mind, he did the exact complete opposite of what I thought he was going to do. <laughs> I am going to go drown my head in the closet. That's actually crazy. Yeah, you're right, though. You don't really ever see anyone go this way, ever. I literally, it just, it almost, it looks so foreign, actually. That's how much people don't go into it. I told you, I, lit I myself, I literally don't even know the other routes. Yeah, I, I, just, I agree Because I use the bridge so much. 
Yeah, the funny thing is, is it's enough to have gotten Kugi a quick second place and, and just moving still. So who knows? I don't know which is faster. I don't know what the optimal strat is. Uh, you know, I could just tell you that the bridge is usually kind of comfy or home base for all these things. But here we go. Yeah, Kugi using the straightaways to get the little boost in, uh, something we've been seeing him do a little bit more and more today. Or maybe less and less as the day's, as the day's gone on, but was doing more and more to start. It might be just getting, like, getting used to it. Yeah. Probably. I mean, now he's using the bridge. Now, now he did exactly what I said he was going to do on the first lap. Looking like he actually knows the way around Yoshi Valley a little more. And both of them, Kugi actually very confused, visibly confused by that interaction right there. He actually, well, he had his item pulled out. So did Eo. And apparently they drove into the wall and sort of bumped into each other. And yet they somehow hit each other with their items that they had out. That was very strange, and Kugi's face definitely expressed his confusion. Because to oh, be completely sure, to be completely bill. honest, I don't yeah. know what happened there either. Yeah, I'm not sure either, um, but still an entire lap to go. Uh, and a lot of people in this mix right now, so this is when things get extra Mario Karty, um, and, and there's just stuff everywhere. So we'll, see. <laughs> we'll think about it, right? Like when you're in a pack of people and all the crazy items come out, like he's that green shell acting kind of crazy back there. Thankfully, yeah. Kugi didn't get hit by it, but uh, speaking of not getting hit by stuff, Kunio starting to catch up to, ooh, passes Ursa Major and has one more person in his way, and that person looks like it's Lewis, who has got a pretty decent lead. Kunio does have that mushroom. It looks like he's going to save it for the right moment. Um, ooh, I would have debated there, like maybe. He's got right four moment, on the right side for Kugi. Oh, oh Will no, he be able to pass him oh, here? Oh, I see what he's doing. He does he's doing. not. No, no, no. He's got, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. That was, oh, man. That was actually a really good play. It's just a shame. Uh, Lewis had the defenses already stacked up, so it didn't work out for Cunio. But otherwise, heads up play from Cunio, man. I definitely appreciate that. It feels good to go out with a heads up play like that, even if you do get second um, and not first. But uh, Cunio yeah. right there in third. Still making it happen. And now on his last race, so we'll see what that has in store. Um, mm. And, I, yeah, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until after this race, and then I'll check scores because that is what makes sense. Yeah, but Cunio actually finishing at an even 260 points, while Kugi right here on his final race is at 248, which wow. means he actually has to win this race outright in order to outplace Kunio in what I assume is probably first place. I haven't seen very many other people surpass him in terms of that scores, lest he actually tie with him for first place for the Team Bill circuit tonight. Otherwise, he would get 12 points. So Kugi, yeah, I don't know. he literally has to win this race in order to win the circuit. Yeah, I'm not sure what Fates totals are at, but I know Fates won a couple races. But he also has taken, like, you know, he's taken some L's too, uh, similarly to Kugi. And Kunia, so you're right. Uh, we'll see. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for reminding me of Fates. If he, if he though, like if he does win or gets first outright, that'd be great. Fate is in this race, so I guess you know we'll see. We'll see what actually happens. Uh, yeah, I mean we don't know the actual whole scores, but what we do know off the top of our heads is that you know Kugi does have to win this to have at least a chance of winning the Team Bill Circuit tonight. So will yeah, he be able to do it though? That's the um, question. Looking pretty do, good so far. Yeah, he's looking great so far. It's squeezing in between those tires and the, and the uh, guardrail. And now pulling ahead a little bit. Um, that is Fade, I think, right behind him. And I say right behind him, but, you know, there's a little bit of distance there. You can't really tell by the mini map, but that's a, a, a healthy-ish distance. Um, the CDC would approve. But yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely practicing good social distancing. Yeah, but we'll see what actually happens because this is only the start of lap number two. So, you know, when things get really crazy, um, usually in that lap three is when things really start to go off the rails. But the further Kuki gets ahead and it looks like he's he's doing just that, the better off he's going to be. Does nailed it twice. Gets a little shortcut. Um, Fate it looks like he's drifting a little bit further behind each time. And there we go. Third place now well behind. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's EO just taking over that uh, the dry Bowser in front of him, and some kind of mess back there. Looking at the mini map, Fate meanwhile really doing a good job keeping his uh, not letting it get too distant from Kugi. Um, and there isn't a whole lot he can do in terms of like red shells or anything like that. But all it would really take is a blue shell, which is, might be due, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, look at the, I'd be a little bit nervous. If I was Kugi right oh now, oh my yeah, god, he's, pretty, the he's, red doing, he's doing a pretty good job. I think that was a blue team oh, red shell, so I think that had to have been okay. A little hairy that, that time. Fate really yeah, it was right a blue on top team of red him. Shell, but look how many red people are actually very far back. Oh my god, here comes a blue shell. Here comes a blue shell. Here comes. Here comes. 
Oh my god. Oh no. no. Oh my god. No. no. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Yo, what? Come on, man. That's twice. What? A this is twice this has happened to him. This is twice. I'm so upset. He literally loses. Gets second place to the Tindo circuit in the last possible second. This is. Oh. That, huh? Koogie, no. Well played, man. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna. I'll just check the scores to make sure it's right. But I'll, I'm gonna guess your math is probably right. But that, yikes. So all right, let's let's see what actually happened there. It looks like he's getting ready to start his game over. Um, oh. We already have it ready. So let's eagerly check out what the final scores are. At least for Koogie's final score, anyways. Uh, he can still tie for it depending on how low uh, fates is. That's pretty much his only chance of getting right, first. Let's see. Okay, tied. Oh yeah, tied. Yeah. All right. Well, I go. feel a little bit less bad. I feel a little bit less bad now. It's actually a bigger disparity than I thought. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big Blaze, one. But, I don't uh, know when Bla yeah. Blaze may have started late, honestly. Because I'll, I'll finish late, though. Well, here's the thing. It's only 8.30. Let's say he's a race behind, and let's say he gets first in that race. That would already put him at 2... Or, yeah, 2.51. Uh, yeah, 2.51, right? 15 points for first. Yes. So if he had two more races, then he could potentially win. But if he's only at a yeah. point where he has like one more, or if he's done, who knows, then this might be it. And for anyone who's curious what the actual end scores are, um, you're going to have to wait until 8 o'clock and check out the uh, respective Twitters that you see here or check out the Discord server. I've been posting the results in there, um, both my server and Glenn's server. And I say my server, but I really mean Master Hand Gaming Discord server. And if you're interested in that, uh, that in the Glenn server, you could literally find the Glenn server in the Master Hand Gaming Discord server. So you could kind of talk to everyone and meet everyone you want. And I suggest you do. And this was actually a good time today. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the way this ended out. We've had a couple six, uh, sort of Mario Kart suspense level finishes to, to uh, the past two circuits we've had here, both Free For All and Team Doe. And if you are looking for Free For All, we do those every single Sunday. Uh, keep the graphic. This is it. Basically the same format as Team Doe, which, uh, you know, Nintunus, Nintunus and I talked at length about today, probably trying to replace that at some point with maybe a battle mode or something a little bit more immersive. We're going to talk about that a little later, but uh, you find that every single Sunday, and then if you're looking for something that isn't Mario Kart, or you're a fan of this channel, just chilling for the moment, you already know. DNA every single Thursday. Uh, those are Eastern Standard Time, so bracket starts at 7.30 Eastern, and registration closes at 6.30 uh, Thursday. So if, if you're into this definitely sign up it's been a pretty good time uh, we usually get about 80 to 100 people plus at times so be sure to check that out it's always a good time hanging with the boys but yeah this has been team Doe circuit in tunis i want to thank you as always for kind of coming here and bringing it with me today making making my life a little easier with with some good um actual insight on this game it's what i do heck yeah Okay, Ursa Major, by the way, still has three races left. So there's a lot of people right. still going. And I'm like, before, let's see, he's at 210, three races left. So what's that? Potential 45 points. Uh, 50. Yeah, so I don't think he'll take first, but he could easily get third. In the meantime, if you still have the game open, I do. Just hop on online real quick and just see if battle mode is an option. Oh, sure. I could do that. Might as well, because then like we'll be able to kill a little bit more time before that happens. Not that, you know, we when it ends a little bit earlier on, oh, we don't I'm normally stick around for that also, the whole way, because as Chris said, we post those uh we post those top eight graphics in the Glintendo Circuit Discord and on Twitter over on Master Hand Gaming's and Glintendo's Twitter as well. So uh yeah, I think you would go to I think you'd have to then... you'd have to create a room and then uh you could create a room probably with friends. Oops, I have no yes. Okay. Chris Lodian's main link, apparently. Hey, and we're out on, here. Hey, come on. And then, uh, um, was it why? Not why? I don't think. Just hit it. Just hit okay. I think. Yeah. There we okay, go. So 100 CC uh, race. Mirror. There we 200. go. We got yep, balloon we battle, go. renegade roundup, a bomb blast. So I think this. I think this is the way we would shine Yo, thief shine thief. Right. I remember though. that from double dash. Oh. Ooh, yo, maybe I'll put a vote in the Discord server. If, uh, we'll just pick a couple modes or something. And there's a random battle, too. That might make for a good day. Actually, I'm already excited kind of looking at this. So I think that might be a way that we go. I think that could be a lot of fun. And, and we get kind of a group of people jumping in on that. But, uh, you know. Definitely makes me feel like I have to pee. 
<laughs> gets me excited. All right. Well, anyways, I do want to thank everybody who's been keeping up with these, who's been entering, been watching, whatever, uh, interacting with chat. Uh, you guys literally are making the stream uh, along with Intunus and myself. So we thank you for that. And with that, I guess we'll see you next Sunday, won't we? I guess we shall. Cool, cool. Everyone have a very nice evening. Goodbye, friends. Woo!